And welcome. This is a bit of a different podcast this time around. We uh, it was kind of a spontaneous idea. Uh, we were normally just gonna have a just a regular old hangout night, but uh, instead the boys are the boys are back. So let's just uh, let's get the show on the road. All right, so we're all here. No wait, I need to get a chair. Austin, our new guy, needs a chair. Um, yes. <laughs> But we are here to podcast uh, Lucy, the eternity she was I... for. And uh, we've got uh, got a few different faces this time around, uh, including Austin, the chairman. Say hello, Austin. Hello. Hello. I'm currently setting up a kitchen chair with a pillow on it so that I can sit outside and not cut out every two minutes. That is truly the lap of luxury. We have, let's see here, who do we got? The returning new-ish faces. We got Demetrius, the Mattress Man, and Grimmy. Just hey, barely here. Up? Just barely <clears throat> here. Then, of course, we've got uh, the Italian Stallion, Draco. Hello. Hello. And welcome back to the land of the living, Sassonte. It's been a while. Man, did you miss me? Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Anyways, we're all here to talk about uh, the laws of robotics and all those uh, all those handy dandy things. First law. What is the first law? First law is I don't know. that uh, a, oh, a robot, a robot can't harm a human or something. Hurt. Robots can't uh, hurt humans, or through inaction, allow a human to be hurt. Good. I'm, I'm going to assume you're right. I certainly know. don't know it. There are humans getting hurt all over the earth, so technically, through inaction, the ro the robots are allowing those they people to get hurt. They failed. Scrap them. And that's why the law is a complete hoodwink, and should never actually be used for AI development. This is, well, I think this it's is a good suddenly turning really dark. <laughs> well, it's a good theory, you just you can't leave it there. Huh, well, I mean... I. I suppose that's true. Uh, well, I mean, so I guess we might as well just get started. We've got our introductions out of the way. So, what, I guess my first question is, what did you all expect going into this? Planetary. I was expecting it to be a bit more post-apocalyptic. Okay. Yeah, I agree. From the description, I thought it would be more post-apocalyptic too, but I didn't go in think it it was Planetarian two or something like that. Yeah, I uh, I didn't think it was post-apocalyptic. I um, you see, I read the Steam description, so <laughs> oh, oh I just saw the cover. <laughs> oh, it's all. Yeah, I know. I, I it's... oh oh me oh Ronnie, but um <laughs> yeah. I, I went in expecting this to, you know, I, I was told that there would be guaranteed feels, and I was, this is somebody who, who, who they, they got me World End Economica, and, like, what was the other one, um, but just a couple things where he's like, yeah, these will really make you think and give you some guaranteed feels, and it's like, oh, well... I'm gonna go ahead and not believe this whatsoever because of how wrong that was last time. And boy, boy, did this game hurt me. <laughs> also, I thought the game was going to have a more grim atmosphere, but it was quite <laughs> light, light hearted. Yeah. Well, no, no pun intended. Mm hmm. Yeah, actually, I thought it was really interesting how they played off of that normalcy to kind of reinforce this um i don't know like having a baseline and then putting the robots on top of that kind of focus more on those aspects that were different and it allowed kind of more of the social contention between our robots good our robots bad and that kind of highlights the father's um uh internal struggle and um, the main characters like internal struggle with this concept of are they human are they not how do they fit into society yeah i mean this game i i didn't expect it to have the messages that it did. I, I wouldn't c call any of the messages super strong, but it certainly had some that I wasn't expecting, but that's it's getting way, way ahead of ourselves. So, I mean, I guess we could just start off of when the game starts, and it gives you the laws of robotics, and then 
you you are placed in the foot the, the foot shoes the shoes uh, uh, yes. just he's, he's this he's this teenager this high schooler who is as I call him a cranky old man because yeah, he, he he's anti everything progressive and futuristic oh, what an annoying little contrarian I was yeah. gonna say in the beginning, the very beginning, I just wanted to... Ugh. I bet he still he has the final please. records. Pocket watch. <laughs> Dad, I, 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 know it's, I know it's the year 2300. Where where are my cassettes? We live in a society. Wasn't it 2050, <laughs> though? I, I don't know. I, I just threw a number out. Yep. Yeah, he's basically the embodiment of a Luddite. Yeah, he's a, he's real contrarian. He's he's real hipster. But only because uh, don't he was start with hipster. me, that hipster. Hey, he's a total hipster. Oh, I know. It's, it's terrifying. You know, Jade has like a huge record collection. So when you said that, I just kind of had to face palm a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Jade. So yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, automatically, I feel like it, it was sort of a unique take. Usually. You've got your protagonists that are just, they're average in every way, but they've just got this knack for being a good person. And then there's this guy who's like, ah, I see uh, we, we function on electricity. That's bullshit. Where are my candles? You know. Oh, <laughs> shit. This man is crankier than every baby boomer I've ever met. And then he goes home and, you know, he's like, oh, my room's very Spartan, you know, except for the laptop and the charging port for my phone I have. To be fair, in 2050, that's probably going to be retro. No lap <laughs> retro yeah. laptop. Who, who has charging ports? We just have phones that don't die. I love how his uh, phone charger was compatible with charging up Lucy. Yeah, yeah, oh. funny how, uh... Yeah, USB, USB 3, huh? Would you, uh, would you say that his phone model was an android? <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, that's, an operating, that's an operating system you would <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Let it be. It's a joke. It is a joke. Leave me alone. <laughs> but yeah, but what my original point before I decided to be a shyster was, um... That aside from, you know, a certain group of people, this isn't, like, this seems like it's not intended to be a relatable main character, which was different for me. Because usually main characters are all average, they don't have anything special about them, so you can sort of have an easier time self-inserting. But this character has, despite not having a name, has a very defined character already. Right, the entire game just contradicted that because, like you said, he's... He's really a character of his own, but they tried so hard to make him self-insertable self by, you know, calling him you, and just never giving anything like his name or anything like that out. Yeah, they, they give you the option, almost like the requirement to self-insert, but they're like, we're gonna decide what this person's like. You'll be able to make idiot decisions like trying to shove a whole human inside your backpack, but we're gonna tell you what this guy's like. Yeah. Another thing is that um, the, his whole contrarian mindset, they drop that pretty, pretty fast. Yeah, it's like, I, 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 that was sort of a problem I had almost. Like, once he gets uh -huh. Lucy, he's like, wow, I'm really bothered by this android's existence. And then a day later, he's like, man, this is pretty cool. It's like, well... You know, I have a theory about that. What? Oh, my theory is just that, like, since he'd never been exposed to androids before... He had, like, genuinely no idea what to expect. Or maybe it was always this offhand, very robotic, um, inhuman thing. So then when he's exposed to Lucy, who from the... Yeah, at first she's very robotic, but then she starts to act human, and he's like, wow, this is something I can connect with. And he was never close to friends at school, so I think this is supposed to be kind of commentary again about, like, people today. Kind of glom yeah. onto the whole, like, waifu thing, I guess. I, I suppose maybe it's just preference like i would have preferred it to be a bit more gradual but yeah it certainly mm -hmm. could have been a lot worse i'll at least give it that yeah, that's yeah fair. i think i think he's probably never given too much thought about about te technology and machines and things like, like that and he just listened to what his father said about everything and 
picked up from him. Exactly. Yeah, we'll we'll get to his dad later. His dad's a real, real piece of work. Brick. <laughs> there, there we go, mattress. He's a he's a brick. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. At, I could at use that a point, couple other words. Yeah. <laughs> He, uh, it starts out rather sort of quick. After the initial introduction, he just goes to school and then on his way home, I believe it's on his way home anyway, he sneaks into the junkyard of... Oh no, that big... was uh, on his way to... He to used it as a okay. shortcut to... Yeah. I thought it was a shortcut home, but okay, a shortcut to there. I think so. I think no, it was, it was a shortcut was home. School. It was a shortcut oh, home. Oh, well, there we I go. Think, yeah. okay, it was probably a shortcut home because the the lights uh, on the, the lights in the, in the city were on and stuff. It wasn't morning, I mean, I think. See, I remember it being sunset. Yeah, same. I just remember it. Yeah. I just remember it being right off the bat. So I thought it was him going to school. Well, no, I, I think I, you're I, thinking I, about the next day after he drops her off at the repair shop. Yeah. So he does pass back okay. through there, like, to drop her off, but... I mean, if it's a shortcut one way, it's probably a shortcut the other way, you know what I'm saying? Hmm. Well, yeah, I, yeah. either way, they waste no time in introducing Lucy. I mean, at first, he just, like, well, and it, it was sort of interesting how, like, he realized she was an android, like, from the get-go, and he was just like, Oh, I'll take it home, even though I hate every- <laughs> I hate everything related to this! Let's take it home! <laughs> Yeah, that was well, a bit of, too much, I think. They kind of yeah. made you try and think that he wasn't going to do it, even though you already know he's definitely going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but, so that's what he ends up doing, and he takes the android home and sort of, uh, try he tries to plug uh, the charger in through her nose. <laughs> that is, if you're, uh, if you're not a quitter, he tries. Of course. Did any of you actually do that at first? Yes, of course. That's what the guy said. Too. Yeah, of course. Yep. It was also How just funny. Gonna get those achievements. The, the, I did like the achievements. They were all for. It's basically like, hey, <laughs> you've done this thing wrong. Here's a reward. <laughs> it was pretty. See how many ways we can piss off the reader. Like, mm -hmm. like how you get, uh, like how you get the achievement chivalrous if you tell her that she's heavy. <laughs> yeah. So. He ends up, yeah, he, he plugs her into the charger, and she goes through her whole setup thing, which is kind of almost strange, and then she just goes into sleep mode, and he's like, well, guess I'll go to bed with this robot in the room. <laughs> and uh, so then he sleeps, and then isn't it after he sleeps, do we go to the first doctor chapter first, or do we go to the next day first? I think, uh, I think he wakes up first and then talks to her for a bit. Okay. Well, you see the first doctor. <clears throat> so then, yeah. Uh, at that point, it's it's time to wake Lucy up and figure that whole thing out. So, what did you guys think of this whole bit? Not much, right? Well, like, that was actually... I was trying to make that as a point. There wasn't really much that happened, and yet the scene goes on kind of for a good five, ten minutes. Yeah. And, uh... Yes. Yeah, then he uh, then he goes to visit Akira from Katawa Shoujo at uh, the repair shop and says, Hey, fix my sex bot, please. <laughs> we weren't looting, Lucy. Yeah. Errini. We Oh, we, we're not looting, Lucy. We would never. Th this isn't this isn't me. That's that's all him. But mm -hmm. uh, Good job, Ronnie. Thank you. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get for looting the robot. Quick, somebody start talking about the scene we're at. Okay, Okay. Well, well, the repair that. guy, right? Oh, do you want to go, Austin? Yeah. Uh, no, I've got nothing. <laughs> All right, okay. Well, yeah, so <laughs> did look like a cure. That kind of freaked me out for a minute. But I thought it was really interesting that, like, the repairman had this very human view of androids. Like, yeah, there was a separation between them, but it was, like, a... It was a lot closer than this kind of black and white version that the main character has. So I think that's kind of the first introduction to androids as people, too. Um, and I thought it was cute. Like, didn't he give him a discount or something like that? Uh, oh. half discount. Yeah, well, yeah, was, yeah, that, wasn't that was it simply cute. because he was so excited to interact with an android of this caliber? 
It might have been. Like, and well, especially like a newer Android like Lucy. Yeah, I was about to say, Lucy's like a prototype or something, and he was so interested to work on her. Yeah, the yeah. repairman was saying how you gotta treat the androids right. He's just like hammering that in. Um, it's just like, yep, I'll do that. He goes, I like you. Well, if you like me so much, how about a discount? Yeah. Oh, well, okay. Smooth. You raise a good point, 14-year-old boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not much happened there, though. Like, he just kind of went to school. That's where you wasn't were running. Though. Uh, I wasn't a fan. Were you guys? I didn't research your gears from the SCP Foundation. <laughs> I I didn't care for him at first, but I, I he grew on me. I, I, he grew on me. A little bit. It just it felt like the story didn't lose a whole lot if you took him out. And yeah. Um. He has no purpose really. He's just there for comic relief. And, uh, and I mean, he didn't like that, but he, he yeah, he doesn't have a purpose. Admittedly, outside of the main character and Lucy, um, yeah, outside of the main character and Lucy, all the other side characters just fill, like, a role more than they do a character. Mm. Yeah. But I wouldn't say they did a necessarily a bad job of that, but, yeah, it becomes very obvious after the first few interactions. It's like, alright, this is just all you're gonna be. But I think they at least did a good job of being different about it each time. Like, it, it's not like, for instance, Yohei Sunohara from Clan Ad. Doesn't matter what route you're playing, uh, he's gonna be that same idiot no matter what he's doing. Whereas Gears and all the side characters, they, they stuck to the type of character they were, but I guess I wouldn't say they served a bigger purpose, but they were... they weren't monotonous. Well, if you say that all the characters were just there, what was the point of Zerial being there? Who's Does that have to do with the sunglasses? Yeah. Oh, we'll get to he that. Had a, we'll get to that later. Yeah, he's, he had a purpose. Everybody has a purpose. Sometimes it's just they don't stray far from it. But uh, I, I didn't mind Gears. But he, I, I will concede he is indeed, for the most part, pointless. Um, until <laughs> the very, very, very end. The With the extra, extra. Read all about it. But... So it's interesting to to see how even though he he loves robots, uh, he still makes a clear distinction between robots and humans. I yeah. think he says humans are humans and robots and robots don't mix them up. Yeah, he even uh, patronizes the main character for it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, despite being, being a total like a cool. tech head and getting all obsessed and excited over it, he still has a head on his shoulders, I guess, is the good way to put it. So he's at least got that going for him. But uh, I, w I want to say that's about it. Comic relief, and he's he's got a good head on his shoulders. He's good for, for learning lessons. He knows what he's talking about. And the, uh, the MC uses him as a punching bag later on. As I don't know, was it the characters do. Yeah. I don't remember that one scene where... Uh, the main character thought that Gears had caught on to the fact that he is tr starting to get obsessed with Lucy, but he just thought that uh, he was gay for Gears. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was oh, great. God. Look, man, I'm not into that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why visual novels always do that, but it never stops being funny. <laughs> yeah, it's all about the delivery. So now, mm. I believe, it's time for the first Doctor chapter. Yeah, um, I was like a big fan of these, believe it or not. I really like the uh, the change of perspective. It's only, I think, if you pay attention to the dates, it's only a month in advance to when uh, uh, MC finds Lucy for the first time, because that takes place in October. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, before, but well, you hey, didn't see. So. Yeah, and I mean, I at this the... point, you're just like, the first scene isn't very long. It just sounds like it's like a shaggy old man, uh, you know, just sort of trying to build this robot, this android. Oh, Lucy, if only I could see your smile. Lucy! <laughs> <laughs> uh, 15 it, 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 years! I, I enjoyed that it sort of, it definitely did offer a new perspective, obviously, but they, they never picked a wrong moment to segue into it, I suppose is the best way to put it. Like, mm. I'm sure 
Zosonte and Grimmy and the mattress and Draco and everybody, including Austin, actually maybe I'm not, no, never mind. But in Miyazora, right. those uh, time skips were so poorly timed half the time. <laughs> well, they were too yeah. frequent and they didn't accomplish much. Yeah, like and it I, was too I, frequent and it was yeah. That was one of the things I was sort of afraid of when I very first played this. Was man. Are they just gonna? Are they gonna do that thing where they always have the worst timing in the world when they go back to the past with the doctor? And but no, not even not even once. It, it yeah, they took care strange. of. They took care in uh, showing us how the story was going, how the character were before starting to to insert uh, the doctor chapters. So we we didn't have to get. We didn't get confused like in Miyazora where we couldn't even understand what was what was going on and and then we were back to the Yeah, that was exactly yeah, it. We like a little bit of past. context but not much. Just enough to get you interested. They did a good job of that. Mm. It, it wasn't enough to make me focus sorely on it, but it was enough to, you know, every now and then be like, Oh, I can't wait for the next flashback. Did uh, did Andrew show up in the first Doctor chapter, or was that later? That is later. No. Okay. Yeah. The worst uh, part, though, was the repetition of the three laws of robotic oh every time. Oh my god, the, yes. the, 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 every, every single yeah. time. The, the thing that I didn't like about that is that I thought that with how much they were you know, just showing the three laws over and over, I really thought that like breaking the laws or something was going to have some real significance in the end like Lucy would like you know accidentally hurt someone but that happened I mean that so would have made it all work I feel like that not necessarily it really would she yeah they, they, br they bring up the laws yeah they bring up the laws once uh, towards the end but otherwise yeah there's no need to repeat as much as they did. Well, I think it was very much more implied, like a lot of the themes that they address in the pod or in the podcast, the <laughs> in uh, in the visual novel, <laughs> is um, like the idea of Lucy becoming more human, and like the divide between androids and humans, and her breaking the three laws of robotics was very symbolic of her being more human than robot. I think. Yeah. Okay. I I can see that. I can get behind that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was, it was I think, too much implied. Like, they could have stood to go into that a bit more, I think. Especially when it comes to, like, coding and androids in general. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it was a good point to have in the visual novel. Okay, so... It was around here when I decided, alright, let's not keep the talking points completely chronologically. Right around now, I figured it would be a good time, since he's such a prominent character, to just talk about... The cranky uh, old dad. The main <laughs> character's father. Fuck him. You don't know so, him quite yet in this story. He goes, you don't want to talk about the scene where he goes to sudden she's all human-like? Uh, we were gonna. I was going to get to that in uh, after we talked about the dad. Because that's what sort of spurs on the protagonist changing views towards androids. Alrighty. Yeah. No, I just want to... I want to get the, uh, the, old, the old poppy out of the way. Hmm. So, how, Ooh, how'd, you, how'd you guys like him? Just love him. did a good job of making him hateable. Yeah, fuck that guy. He, he is a cartoon that they don't even try to hide as the main antagonist, and he doesn't really have any distinguishing features, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, I, mean, I, I would think he's less of a cartoon and more of like a reminder that the real world is a shitty place and that people like that really do exist. Yeah. I, yeah, I agree with you there. He does, he does yeah, suffer people. from all of the other things that side characters suffer from, where, yeah, he's an asshole, and throughout the whole story, that's that's all he really ever is. But, again, it's not the same. Like, he, not every scene of his is some form of, I hate androids. I mean, he still does every now and then, but he's still different while remaining the same. As cliche and contradictory as that sounds. Yeah, we can say he's consistent, at least. Mm. Consistently an asshole. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Consistently a chuckle fuck. So, I mean, there, there really isn't all that much to say. Like, especially from their first few interactions where he's 
he, he he's like that stereotype where he's like, yeah, it's all about the the working man. Son, are you are you a doctor yet? No dad in <laughs> twelve. T talk to me when you're a doctor yet, and you're working in the real world. Also, I hate androids. One thing, one, one thing though, even though he hates androids so much, he didn't try to take away, like to physically take away Lucy since the very beginning. Like No, he was just a total dick to her. Yeah, that's true, but I mean, he still gave the main character uh, a margin of of freedom, of trying to do what he wants, instead yeah. of uh, like trashing the android from the very start. It, it, it showed that he does have some out. semblance of trust for his son, even though hmm. it might not have been much. He, he, he was at least saying, okay, this is this thing that I hate, but my son, who I wish would hate it, doesn't hate it. Might as well see how it goes down. Because I'm sure in the back of his mind, he's like, if worse comes to worse, I can just chop its head off. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. That, that probably would have been uh, pretty gruesome. Yeah, <laughs> just, just a bit. With so, as much as... Sorry, Rene, do you want to... No, you go. I was going to say, I wouldn't exactly call it trust. I'd call it restraint. Because I think that from the get-go, he wanted he wanted the robot gone. Android yeah. Lucy, not uh, the robot. But well, he just... Say. He, you know, he just barely is able to restrain himself. He, he, you know, there's times where he falters later on and a couple hands fly. <laughs> Someone gets knocked out of the way. Son, you want to catch these hands because they're coming. <laughs> yeah, and that's just how I feel about it. I don't feel like he has any sort of trust in his son because he's basically the walking stereotype of a salary man and an overbearing dad. I just feel like he's restrained, restraining himself from doing something he might regret later on. Well, I don't think it was regret so much as, like, I think you mentioned earlier, like, letting his son make those mistakes and then learn from them. Like, a, yeah, shows you right, kid. You should know better. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'd, I'd agree with that. Even though he's a dick, he still acts like a father to some extent. But just not, just not a very nice one, not a very good one. Well, you see that later scene when he's talking with the mother and, you know, trying to figure out what he's gonna do about it and she said just and she said just destroy the robot and he was hesitant about it yeah that at least played that part anyways we'll get more to uh the dad and destroying robots <laughs> why would he do such a thing but uh oh, we'll get to that later so that scene you were just discussing austin it, if you want to bring it up by all means i shall oh you mean right now yeah, yeah, right now. Oh, I was just, well, <laughs> you're all talking about how uh, you think that he had no trust in his son and he's just trying to restrain himself. And I just want to say that that's probably very true because uh, later in that conversation, he was saying that uh, his son is getting too obsessed with the robot and his wife says, then why don't you just destroy it? He says, I can't do that because he'll be too upset. So yeah. he does he does care about his son not in... I mean, enough to just, you know, not go ahead and just destroy her as soon as he wants to. At least stick it out for a bit. Anyways, what I was actually referring to was a scene between the main character and Lucy that sort of spurred his changing views towards androids. You were wondering about us discussing it before we moved on to the dad for a bit? Oh, yes. So what was it? That was the scene where uh, he gets there, and he's expecting to just, you know, pick up Lucy like just any other day, and she's in there, and she welcomes, like, Hello! Welcome to the shop! Just way out there, really energetic. Just a huge, huge contrast to what she was the last time he saw her. Zero to uh, 100. Yeah, pretty much. And <laughs> she like, picks up pretty quick. Whoa! This is a robot, I can't tell. Yeah, no, and that's, that's where the, that sort of yeah, accentuates. That's where the... they, they sort of get repetitive in driving the point home that she's so human-like. 
but unlike the laws of robotics, I can sort of understand why they would want to drive that home, because that's all part of something the game is trying to explain to you. You know, when they bring up the constant, you know, should we treat them like humans? Because even though they're not, they're so alike humans. You know, how, how should we treat them? That's one of the things the game tries to hammer home and make the reader think about, I believe. Yeah, um, like, what is a human? Hmm. Yeah, like, is it, can you really say it's not human if it doesn't, you know, bleed and breathe like everybody else? You know? Well, I think that Lucy human? breathes because I know there's scenes where she's running and she does get out of breath. I think that I was an act I, I more than anything. And that was that was probably just something that was added to a program to again make her seem I doubt she actually needs oxygen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's sweat. crazy. So we had yeah, we had, you know, all all the the silly scenes where you carry her home and she's like, Am I heavy? And like if you want the achievement, you gotta be like, Hell yeah, you're heavy. Damn fatty, lose some pounds. And like she gets like sort of fake pouty, which is kind of cute. Like, I'm just gonna be real. It's kind of cute. I, Sadist. I don't, I don't have a thing for robots. Uh, I'm but... sure you don't. It's probably better than what you have now. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> Listen, hear me out. Robot cat girls. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hear me out, Dylan. Okay. Uh, I know everyone's thinking it. I'm going to Google that right now. Oh, great. Wonderful. Nah, wait till after. We don't want Ronnie to fall apart. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, all the, about the next hour, hour and a half of the game isn't exactly so much plot progression. It's just, it's the same thing happening in different ways. It's, it's easily, even though this is a short story, this is easily the low point, I think, where... Mm -hmm. You know, every day is just another day where not much changes. You just see his gradual acceptance of androids. Lucy has cute moments. His father is a dick wheel. Rinse and repeat for like four or five days. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, it wasn't bad. It's just it. I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but this this five hour visual novel dragged a little bit when this happened. I, again, mm. I won't, uh, yeah, I won't say I didn't enjoy it. It's just, I, I still felt myself ready for things to move along again. Still not as bad as me, Zora. <laughs> I don't know if there's many things as bad as how bad that one drags. Yeah, I mean, it kind of plays a, it kind of plays a point here, but not to the point where they couldn't have done it better. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So, eventually, when things finally do change... Uh, to use the quote from earlier, uh, things go from zero to a hundred just real fast. Um, and, you know, there's that big confrontation where the dad's like, you want to catch these hands. So, I mean, we all saw this scene coming, but what were we all thinking when that happened? Uh, I was thinking I didn't see this coming, sarcastically. I was thinking <laughs> I really want to tear this dad a new one. I was kind of hoping that the MC would stand up for himself and hit him back. <laughs> I was hoping that Lucy would break the laws of robotics and just murder him. Just kill him oh, in cold yeah, blood. Mac. <laughs> that would have been that, wonderful. That would have made for a very interesting story. <laughs> and then uh, Will Smith, Will Smith just, the detective, shows up. Yes. Just, uh, the main character and Lucy just on the run because you know, she killed a dude. That would have been excellent second half. Oh, yeah. Wow, I would have read that. Quickest way to ruin an emotional visual novel. Although a I want to throw out that Kiniku. this game is the uh, it's what made me realize that the three lo laws of robotics were not created by iRobot. Nope. So I I mean I guess we all sort of felt the same. Uh, I, I, like, wow, we saw this coming. Also, this dude's a dick. Hmm. <laughs> And so then you get to the part of the VN that I don't know about you guys, but you know, even though I was pretty sure I knew what was going to happen at the end of the road, I still felt anxious. 
Like, every day, the main character went to school and Lucy would stay at home, trying her best to help out and show that she's useful. Yeah, the whole time, I was like, man, I really hope nothing happens. <laughs> You know, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was I was feeling the anxiety that main character was feeling. It was it was pretty rough. It was a pretty rough about half hour of reading. And uh, I mean, this yeah. is going to be a short podcast because it's a short game, but we're we're sort of already at the point where he comes home one day, and the dad's like, "Hey, son, I'm gonna douse the whole goddamn house in gasoline." <laughs> Wasn't that before he got home? Well, yeah, but when he gets home, it's happening. No, wasn't Lucy already outside? Well, yeah, that, that's what I mean. I was just trying to be funny. Uh oh, oh, no, no. We're well, thanks, classic Ronathan. Thanks, Grimmy. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh me. Yeah. Oh me. Yeah. All right. Well, I've been talking a lot, so uh, tell us about the bonfire, guys. Oh, fuck. I just wanted to say that. Uh, you said that the whole time, every day when, you know, the guy goes to school, you're feeling the same anxiety that he's feeling. But there is never actually a scene where they showed that the main character is feeling anxious that something horrible might happen when he's gone. Oh, yeah, but you know, you know he's thinking it. I would hope so. Yeah. <laughs> and, okay, so the bonfire. Well, let's see. Uh, whew, I mean, it's... The thing is, like, you know it's coming, but it still hits you by surprise. Oh, fuck. The second the dad grabbed the gasoline and, like, the matches, I was like, oh, no. Like, I couldn't sit still. I was actually pacing when I was reading that. And I, I think I was at work at the time, so that was not a good thing. Because customers were like, where are you crying? <laughs> <laughs> it was it embarrassing. Have... But... Oh, shit. Did anybody else break down at that part? I um, didn't. Yeah. I... No, uh, because really. I, was, I was crying, but I mean, I was like, you know, sitting there clutching my chest, breaking out in a cold sweat. Exactly. Cool. That that uh, CG, though, was excellent. Just oh her, my face, God. her face sitting there completely emotionless as she is on fire. She just, just wow. she was so like... Uh, she's like that like meme. The dog she's in the burning room, like, this is fine. Fuck. I mean, just, like, she's sitting there like, I don't care if I'm on fire and it hurts like shit. I am going to wait for Master to come. Well, it was like more resigned than anything else. She's like, well, this was going to happen anyway. It's almost like she knew it was coming too. But she wanted to be there for him as long as she possibly could. Well, yeah. It, must, it must have smelled horrible. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's just... Sasante, just stop. Go. It's time gotta... to stop. <laughs> <laughs> they've, they've got to wait for their master, you know. They've they've got to fulfill their duty there. And uh, but it, it was definitely a rough scene, and I really think the CG is the part that accentuates it the best. Like even if you don't like cry at this scene, you still at least got to be like, "Oof, mm. that looks rough, buddy." <laughs> no, was it was it was just me? No, no, I, I agree with you. <laughs> That's rough, buddy. Yeah, yeah, that's rough, buddy. My 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 girlfriend's the moon. Yeah, well, my android burned to death waiting for me to get home. Wow, that's rough, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, why are we doing this? We deal with sadness with humor. <laughs> well, it's a way to cope with it. Yeah, it's it's a way for us to not grossly sob on podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that that's entirely fair, actually. Maybe, maybe we are androids. I mean, if you if you want some drama, I know how to cry <laughs> on comedy. So. <laughs> well, we will save you for the clan ad podcast then. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> Be prepared. Lucy, Lucy said, like, he didn't want to see the main character's sad face when he came home and didn't see her waiting for him. But, like, I think the face the main character made when he, he saw her burning, burning was, like, a tad more sad. Than he than he would that have been. Was, that scene was handled very well. How like they showed uh, like how the whole uh, the whole screen would just like turn red, you know, as his head is pounding, and you saw him like running through the house, stumbling over everything. I mean, that's some very powerful stuff. There. Yeah. yeah. No, it was definitely. I think in terms of writing, it was one of the strongest points of the main story. 
Plus, even we all though, know that the extras were the best part. Yeah, even though you, you you saw this coming, you knew it was gonna happen. You know, they still write it in a way to where you're invested. Exactly, they just nailed it. Who are Koreans? <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Those Koreans in their yeah. their good writing. All right, um, we need to. Have I hate our, to say that no one ever, but we need we need to have this company rewrite all of the pull top games. Yes. Man, I want to set Orihime on fire. I was gonna say, yeah, that's what Orihime <laughs> is burning in front of the planetarium. Akito, I that. wanted to wait for you. Show me your happy face. <laughs> I, I, I haven't read Mia Zora yet. Maybe no spoilers. That's okay. Yeah, it's, it's not it's an no actual spoiler. spoiler. Nobody actually burns to death in front of the planetarium. No worries, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> so, um, at that point, you know, you have the final choice in the game. You know, because obviously he's he's just a teenage kid. He can't really do anything about his dad. So, at that point, Akira the Mechanic says, All of this stuff you've gone through, you know, even though this is how it ended, do you feel any regrets? And since it's not that big, let's just tackle the ending, the bad end, where you say, Yeah, I, I, I do regret this. This was garbage. Quote, unquote, bad. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean it's... Either... The... Neither ending is really bad, because even in the bad end, he still ends up married with kids. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's why it's not necessarily a bad end. It's just the less ideal end. Although, that's also depending on your perspective. Hmm. So, I mean, did anybody, I guess, I did, did, that, did that end betray anyone's expectations, or...? Um, I I'd actually played. like to... Oh, um, I just wanted to make one quick kind of modifier to that. I think it's important to recognize it's not like, did you regret this whole situation? It's do you regret, you know, loving Lucy? Yeah. Although, to be clear, this is not the romantic type of love for anybody listening. This is not a romance novel. This is purely companionship and attachment. Yeah, but like, do you regret getting attached to Lucy? Yeah. Do you think Versus, like, you know... Hmm? Do you again? think the novel could have been better if it had, a, if it had more of a romance? No, I don't think so. Like, yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't think so either. I think it would have been a lot more cliche and a lot more... Mm -hmm. You know, nothing would have surprised me if it was romantic because this game has a lot of themes and almost plot points sometimes where if this was just a good old romance shoujo... You would know exactly how it was going to end. The character would have the same old dialogue that you've seen in every other romance thing. You know, so I mean, it's, it's, it's a fine line. And this novel straddles it pretty well. Simply because they don't, it doesn't have a romance aspect. It's got all of the attachment and emotions you would get from a romance aspect. But it can do everything different because it's not tied down to it. Hmm. So yes, I guess exactly. to answer your question, it seems to be the common consensus here that if this was a romance visual novel, it would be far less good. Yeah, yeah, and I feel the same. I just was hoping there would be someone in here who thought differently I could throw out a nice controversial opinion. Okay, it would have been cute, let's be real. It would have been adorable, and I kind of thought that's where it was going. But It would have been cute, no I'm doubt. It, just, it, would, it, it, it wouldn't have been anything new at that point. Exactly, right? It wouldn't have done the things that it did super well as well because it would have been kind of distracting from those points and kind of putting that energy towards something else. And I mean, Anything I think the... it just works good. Well, it works good. It works well that way. Case <laughs> in point is the key novel Planetarian. That novel wouldn't have been nearly as special if he fell in love with Yumemi. But yeah. it, they're, just, they're just a couple of companions one of them's a robot, and that makes any of the attachment or the emotional scenes just all the stronger. Whereas if it was, you know, oh, love of my life, the android, it would have been like, well, just replace android with human, and it's every other romantic visual novel I've ever read. So, yeah, no, I, I think this, uh, it was definitely the right choice, and they did it very well. Hmm. well one thing I, I thought is that, uh, 
the, well, forgotten memory end, as it's really called, uh, isn't even necessary. Because the, the epilogue that you get after it, uh, An Old Man's Wish, is actually the beginning of Reunion, which you get after finishing the true end. Yeah. And so, before we get there, let's talk about the junkyard a bit more. Ooh. And, you know, because you guys had mentioned there was a scene where you take Lucy back to the junkyard and she has that, you know, big emotional speech. And as, uh, as you guys had said, it ties into the ending. Now, throughout this whole thing, you've been having flashbacks of the Doctor. And, you know, he's, he starts getting Lucy to finally work. He's finally created Lucy. And she's trying to assimilate her into society alongside the fact that, you know, they've got a bunch of political bigwigs worrying about, you know, well, this android is super advanced. Should we allow it to exist, coexist with us? And the whole time it's set up to, you know, no, this is probably not going to happen. You know, they're probably going to vote no. The doctor very clearly expects it, but he keeps trying just in case, you know, because you never know. And he wants to see Lucy, you know, see if Lucy's potential can be peaked. And when you choose that, no, I don't regret it. Uh, the main character steps outside, starts another day, and he's like, you know, Lucy really would have liked to see this guy. And then it seems to end there. But you do a little, you play around with a little glitch on the menu, and you'll hit play again. And it takes you to October 12th, which, as we said earlier is the day you meet Lucy originally. And it's another flashback with the Doctor, and I, I'm sorry for taking control here, I'm almost done. But right, Do at, right at this Are moment, you... you know, when you're like, huh, well, this is where the Doctor's taking her to the junkyard, and this she's gonna, she's gonna wait there for him or something, and this is going to tie in to when the main character finds her at the beginning of the story. And then she's, you know, staring out at the spot where you meet Lucy earlier. And then she turns around and said, It's been a long time, Master. And that killed me. Because oh, it wasn't a flashback. It wasn't a flashback. It was the future. And you, the Doctor has been the main character all along. <laughs> and damn if that isn't one of the strongest points of the whole story. Yeah, the strongest ever, I'd, I'd say. Yeah, when I whenever I tell people that this VN isn't going to seem all that emotional and then it just blindsides you, this is the scene I'm talking about. I really feel what I loved about that scene is how it would have worked so much in like a movie version. Like this that whole scene where he's like tearing up and he's like, "I got a beard now. Are you sure you can love me?" <laughs> Lucy, are you a beard girl? <laughs> <laughs> but yes, this this scene absolutely destroyed me, and I, I never get tired of saying it, but this is it, because it just sticks with me. Whenever a visual novel gets me to start to well up and start to cry and all that, I, 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 I smile and I nod. And I just, I'm looking at the screen and I'm smiling and nodded like, all right, you got me, you win. And this one stuck with me because I guess... You know, even though I've played so many sad visual novels before this, this one just took me by so much more surprise than all the others. Did did anyone see this twist coming? I did oh, not. I didn't. No, I. The only I... thing. Go on. The only thing that seemed off was the that at the beginning of the game, the Lucy, the main character, found was out of battery and. All, all dirty and stuff, and uh, it seems like a bit unlikely that the last episode Lucy, who was uh, like all clean, spark sparkly clean and uh, full at at full battery, would uh, end up like like at the beginning of the game. See, and for me, See, I, thought, I thought like a I... year or two had passed between the the uh, the ending scene with the Doctor and the beginning of the novel. That's how I justified her being all dirty and low battery at the beginning, was I thought a year or two had passed. How I justified it was, uh, he, 
He takes Lucy, purposefully drains her battery, sits her down in the junkyard, and then covers her with dirt. That's how I justified it. Well, I didn't even fit much, but yeah, you know, like the fact that it didn't have years was, I think, a really useful tool to kind of lead the reader mm. to think that it had been a couple years. Like, it doesn't explicitly say it, it just leads you to think it. Yeah, they and that was also kind of the more of a you got me moment. And I, re I really like that they don't withhold the information. They don't technically lie to you or mislead you. They just play on the fact that this is what your natural assumption is probably going to be. And that's what makes the reveal so much more emotional. So, Sonte, I'm assuming you kind of had an inkling it was going to happen? Uh, I did not, actually. Oh, the way you asked, I thought you were saying, well, I had a feeling and I'm going to talk about it, but no, I'm... I, uh, I just I'm... didn't want to... I just, I just didn't want to um, seem stupid. Oh, <laughs> so you're glad? Uh, you're glad we all answered the yeah. way we did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it was. It it was a real good twist, and I mean, when you look back on it, you're like, this twist is so, you know, almost basic, almost tried and true, and yet it's still just done so damn well. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. It's it's perfect in its simplicity. Yes. The there good old go. twitch. Yeah, no, that was, yeah, it, it, it was great. So, at that point, then we unlock all the extras, and as most of you uh, will agree, you unlock Reunion, which is the top point of the game. I think the moment we just discussed is the best point of the game, but Reunion is damn good, and it serves as the epilogue. And you guys played it a lot more recently than I did, so I'll just preface it with saying it's in the future, where it, it takes the uh it's from the perspective of the asshole dad who's old and crotchety now and i'll let you guys take it away i've done a lot of talking but you guys all experienced this a lot more recently than i did so go on well when i first um, uh when i first saw that that scene i saw it as an old man's wish because i got the bad end first after uh you know making a wrong choice and having to replay the entire game but i thought that the old man was the main character. I didn't... For me, uh, finding out that it the dad was actually a reveal for me. Okay, so you thought... You thought they were sort of going in for a... A subtle second version of the twist we just talked about. Do I understand that right? I guess you do. <laughs> guess so. Mm. Um, <laughs> but... I, I, I guess what I'm trying to what I'm trying to ask is that was this sorry I had, for to, everyone had to mute else? myself for a second there. Oh, it's okay. For everyone else, was this as unexpected? Uh, no. I, I pretty much figured it out that it was the father immediately. Uh, I don't know why, but yeah. Um, no, not yet, Uh yeah, it was really good, and I think it did a very good job at humanizing the dad, who, if, if the reunion did not exist, I would say is a bad antagonist. Uh, but it does, and he's not really so bad anymore. Well, he did what it did... Son out of the house. Yeah, so he's a bad person, but the thing is, is now that you finished up the son's route, and kind of his coming, his, uh, coming full circle and coming to terms and being content with himself... You have to go back to the dad and, like, tying up the loose ends. And it was good seeing the dad's change of uh, perspective in that now he's become dependent on this android. He understands a bit more of where his son was coming from. Um, like, not just this, you know, involvement of the android, but, um, like, why Lucy was so different. Yeah, it does a very good job of uh, mirroring sort of the Lucy and then... Lucy to the main character, and then this this uh, silveroid android to the father now. Mm -hmm. And the most important point of all that was, um... Shoot, where was I going with that? I had a really good point. <laughs> <laughs> this always happens. <laughs> um, yeah, what was, what was... Oh yeah, then, um, the loneliness. Because, like, he reflects a whole or not a whole bunch of times, but like a few times through his, through Reunion about how lonely he is and how he wishes his son would just get back in contact with him and i'm um, just not understanding why why things are the way that they are and then he starts thinking at the end like 
this is how my son must have felt when he was growing up. Oh my God, you know, what did I do? You know, I've neglected him. And hey, I don't think he makes the full connection, but he gets pretty darn close. And that's very important for like his character evolution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, I, I very much <clears throat> enjoyed it. Like I, I, I sort of, I expected it like, you know, once you sort of realize this is from the dad, you're like, okay, okay. By the end of this, the dad's not going to be such an asshole. But they do it in such a almost creative way. You know, it, it feels very real. You know, it feels like this is what a grumpy old man going through remorse would actually feel like. Yeah, like, it would have been nice to get the happy ending, but it wouldn't have felt as real as this did. And that was what was so great about it, is how real it felt. You know, uh, what I thought was really cool uh, was how, like, uh, so I mentioned how if you get the bad end first, you get uh, an old man's wish, which is just the beginning of Reunion. Uh, you know, when it suddenly becomes an NVL. Uh, but... What I thought was cool is how I thought that Reunion and an Old Man's Wish were completely separate. But then you get the scene after uh, you find out that, uh, you know, Sun's not coming back. You get that scene that ties in that both endings connected to each other. If someone else wants to handle what happened after that. Well, so the Silver Ray's got to go for repairs, right? And, um... He's got to he's got to um, kind of be by himself and take care of himself, and he realizes just how dependent he's become. And uh, I think he sees there like how useful androids are, but also like um, what was what was gone in his life in terms of like human companionship. Do you think that he felt any regrets about how he'd done things? Because he said that if he went back in time, he still would have done the same thing. He still would have spent all of that time working. But do you think that he really would have? if he knew what he would go through now. I think the thing is that uh, he fully believes that uh, devoting himself to his work was the only real enjoyment that he could have gotten out of life. But no matter what he did, if he were to stick to his, to his ideals, that this would have been the ending no matter what. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to trade giving up uh, his ideas of what life should be just so that he could have a, you know, a more ideal relationship with his son so you know he's still he's still pretty selfish at the end even though he's waking up hmm Zasante what do you think about that uh I see it more as like yeah he could have gone back but he wouldn't have learned the lesson he did I think he, maybe I I want to think that he feels this is a fitting punishment for him yeah, oh, I, like I, I like it better that way. Yeah, it fits like the character that way too. Because this way, he is—he is being punished for his actions. He's not. Everything's not automatically okay, and there's still like a little hope for the future when Lucy, or the, the uh, yeah, Lucy says, "Yeah, we can do this next year, and you can just keep trying and atone for your sins for for the rest of your life." Oh yeah! By the way, Lucy shows up. Yeah, I really like that part where she shows up. <laughs> no, no, uh, she has, she has made it a day. The first thing that went through my mind, uh, whenever, uh, whenever his android, uh, came back and was like, you know, just a shadow, I'm like, wow, they must have been too lazy to draw a new character. <laughs> <laughs> I had the same thought. Not gonna lie, I didn't think that. I was sitting there the whole time thinking, oh, please be Lucy. Please be Lucy. Yeah, I did. I did not see that coming, but I did think that oh, maybe it was just a different style, or maybe they're like waiting to the reveal. Maybe it looks different. Maybe they don't want him. Maybe it's you know on the father. Like maybe he doesn't want to look because he's too unsure about seeing a different android each time. Yeah, but well, what I what I thought was gonna happen was I thought that it was gonna end with him seeing the new android and be like, oh. You look so much like her, because the android would look kind of like Lucy. But man, um, did I not expect it to actually be her. That is where it hit me the second time. This novel got me twice, and this was the second moment. 
No, I was just thinking how, uh, well, how old do you think the dad was in Reunion? Because I was thinking something around 70? Yeah, sounds about right. He's in his twilight years, by far. So, that means that, uh, so whenever Lucy shows up at the end of Reunion, he's like, oh, then I guess my son must have fixed you up, and, but if you look at the timetables, uh, it took him 50, 15 years to fix up Lucy, and so he would have been around 35 by then. So, Lucy showing up to greet his father must have happened at least 10 years after he actually finished her. It means yeah. he, was keeping, he was keeping Lucy a secret from everyone that, that whole time. Well, yeah, that, that was his plan all along. He had to keep her a secret because the government had said, no, uh, we cannot assimilate this android into society. So it was either keep her so a secret did... or the government would catch him and probably destroy her. So why and did he, he didn't uh, know how to react. Why did he decide to let her uh, go see his father? Because at that Just point, the government was fine with it. People could have right, their own well. android assistants. I mean, the dad has his own android assistant already. So Lucy, See, as far as everyone else knew, was just another assistant. Well, the assistants were already common, like in the prior point. Like we talked, we, uh, we were listening to Dr. Years, and he's like, oh yeah, my family has a whole bunch of androids. What I'm thinking here is that maybe enough time had gone by that maybe the government thought that he just created another android that looked like Lucy because, I don't know, like maybe it was just a standard, standard look or something. But in terms of Lucy coming to the dad, I thought that maybe she had just done it on her own. Because maybe he didn't know, or maybe he just he didn't explicitly say no, but she decided to do it. Well, she was the one who brought the letter. Exactly, right? So... And it was on his birthday, too, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. But maybe, like, Lucy asked to do it, and then he's, our, he's like, Alright, just, you know, take care of yourself this time. Please try uh, not to notice, become uh, a bonfire. <laughs> if you notice, the silveroid that, uh... <laughs> The Silveroid that his dad had was a model PIM-23, and Lucy was the first PIM model. So I think you're right in saying that eventually the government decided that androids like Lucy were allowed to exist, and they, you know, started making the PIM models again. Just not as advanced, I think. Like, mentally. Or personality-wise. Too human. Yeah, Lucy yeah. was a prototype. So, you know, when they when they made the uh, the future PIM models, they weren't as advanced as her because being as advanced as she was is why they weren't okay with it. So that was their compromise. Okay, you can make more realistic androids, but they can't be this realistic. So I'm trying to think. Yeah, speaking of realistic, uh, I wanted to bring this up earlier. Uh, if you remember Andrew, uh, that... Uh, that one that was assisting uh, assisting the main character, the doctor, uh, yeah. rebuild Lucy. Any time you saw Andrew and Lucy on the screen together, you could see the stark difference between those between them two, and just see just how much more advanced Lucy was than the other androids. Just any time Andrew came up, he looked so stiff, and just he didn't have the uh, aura. Ronnie looking at him. <laughs> He just, he just looked very dead inside, like androids should be. And the same thing you said <laughs> of the, uh, the father Silveroid. She looked exactly. more realistic than Andrew, but it was still very obvious this was a machine. Yeah. So, in that case, he finally, uh... The old man finally sort of, I don't want to say relents, but sort of accepts Lucy. You know, he might not be completely okay with it, but... I mentioned it earlier that, uh, well, not not earlier in the podcast, but before I mentioned it, that uh, I actually was kind of mad that the father did not apologize to Lucy for setting her on fire. He's still stuck in his ways. This is still a robot and not a human. So yeah. why, why apologize to something that, even though they have feelings, those feelings are just artificial. I don't know. I couldn't help getting angry about that. I guess I just connected to Lucy too much. I guess you're like everybody else. You're you're like, no, this is this is basically a human. You apologize yeah, to this cute Moe robot right now. 
Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this this has one of my other favorite CGs, and it's the one I'm using for this podcast image, where she's smiling with tears in her eyes, and he gives her an approving pat on the head. Oof, my heart. Oh, I know. That was, yeah. that was a fitting ending to this novel, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, my Kokoro. <laughs> yeah, it was real nice. Um, and you know, let's uh, let's mention it in case uh, any of the developers are listening to this. Um, a background music part of the game would just be amazing because the soundtrack was very good, and we've got no way to listen to it. They never released a soundtrack. I, they released the ending song as DLC, but I don't know if that comes with anything else or not. But yeah, and in the extra section, you've got your CG gallery, but that's it. No, no, no BGM section. Nothing. Well, there's only one thing to do: play the game again, mute Lucy's voice, and record all the music. I've tried um, getting the archive files, but they use a very unique version, so it's pretty. It's pretty tough. Yeah, they do not want us to have this. No, they want to keep it under lock and key. Forbidden fruit is always the sweetest. <laughs> it's, it's too true. beautiful. <laughs> it's too beautiful for mankind to just have at will. But uh, I guess the last thing of note is the the extra thing you unlock after finishing Reunion, which is just just a, just a text-based logbook from a Dr. Bayek. Now, y'all know who that is? Bayek? Yeah, Bayek yep. is... Uh, that's Dr. Gears. Yes. That's his that is dad. Gears' dad. That's his dad. And so that, it's sort of ties everything together. Reunion tells you the end, and then Dr. Bayek's log tells you the beginning, and you find out, oh, Gears' dad is the man who made Lucy, and that's why Gears has all these assertions he's so sure about when it comes to androids, because his dad is the one that made it, and that's when the, the sunglasses dude, he's an assistant to the dad. So yeah, you're yeah, all wondering... Yeah what part he like, played, yeah. that's the part he played. Yeah, yeah I and I can actually explain that. a couple of the different ties there. I understood that he, you know, was the guy who helped uh, hide Lucy, but I just feel like if Zeriel wasn't in the game, it really wouldn't have mattered much. Well, again, the that's same can be said of most of the side characters. True. Well, what it was supposed to do was to get you curious about him and what role he played, because, yeah. like, the dad... Did the dad have a have a character design or no? I don't think he did. No, did he? he was never even shown until the log. Uh, oh, yeah, exactly, right? So, if this side character had a had a picture, then why was he so important? And I think Actually, that there were, there were a lot of little Easter eggs through the whole thing. Like, there was the fact that he was in the repair shop, so he probably knew this guy who was also in Robots. And um, then he was in front of the factory, or the, the factory with um, Dr. Gears. And, like, they seemed to maybe not know each other, but, like, he wasn't freaked out by him or anything. And they were both in front of the factory. So, like, there's another Easter egg. And then, again, it was no, briefly mentioned that he worked the with Dr. Gears. The what? log itself was an Easter egg because they actually only mentioned Gears' name once, very briefly, in a very meaningless scene. Exactly, but I caught that. Did you guys catch it? Yeah, yeah. I caught it. Yeah. Exactly. Because they don't do all that. There's not enough characters for you to just brush aside this person's name. So when you see it again, you're going to be like, okay, which of these four other characters does the name Bayek belong to? Because I recognize it. Exactly. So yeah, I thought it was a, it was a pretty neat way to tie up the, I guess, the only loose end. Lucy end, perhaps. That uh, the story had. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Seriously. So, um, I guess we were all your your you guys' final thoughts on you know the messages that this story was trying to send home. <laughs> yeah, don't be racist. Uh, love transcends species and robots. Uh, what is human? Ah, there you go. Well, you know, it's kind of relevant with today. We're trying to figure out what, you know, what robots' rights should be, especially when they have the same intelligence and capacity can, to feel a human, too. Can you, know, still, uh, can you still live a happy life and make amends with the people around you, even if your dad is a total dickhead? Oh, uh, good one. <laughs> that, that's the message I think it was trying to put across. <laughs> you can light a fire under your ass or your android. Oh, God. <laughs> too soon. <laughs> so, I mean, I... I wouldn't say the messages here were strong, 
But did you guys at least feel they were good? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. yeah. Undoubtedly. Yeah, I felt, you know, none of them were really makes you think all that much. But, you know, by the time the novel was over, I was like, you know, they did a good job getting all this through. Could have could have stopped mentioning the laws of robotics after, the, like, the first or second time, but <laughs> they, they did a really good job of, you know, making you sort of, you know, hey, if I was in this position, you know, you wouldn't, you, you, you aren't able to discover your, the viewpoint you probably might have right away. You know, it definitely, you still had to put some thought into it and understand both sides. That's probably one of the strongest things I've got to give about the writing of the dad. Even though he's a dick, is he really wrong sometimes? No, he's not. He's just not. You may not agree, but he's not wrong. He's still a dick, but you, know, I really you, know, want you to, can, they I, do a I good really job of letting you see all the sides. I really want to refute that point that he's not wrong, but I, I really can't think of a of a part that yeah where yeah. are your truth bullets yeah you want to like, because I, this like, guy's a dick, I, I really but... want to say he's wrong but i can't think of why because as much as you don't oh. agree i just i just don't think he is only sometimes i disagree but it's like you know i guess i guess the best way to say it is i disagree but it's not like i don't see where he's coming from well, I think yeah. I get why Austin's having such a hard time with this. It's because the father's outlook on life is completely, like, ass-backwards to start with. You know, his priorities are wrong in terms of his family, his son, and even, like, his kind of work-life balance and all that. So, if that had not been a problem, I don't think any of the other stuff would have resulted from that as much. And also, like, with regards to Lucy, like, not giving everything a fair shot and being very impulsive and taking it personally. Which, for a human android like that, you don't normally expect. Mm, fair, but I still get why Austin's, like, kind of taking a real personal like. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I, I get it. And, I mean, that's good. That's good it's that a, a novel like this can make I, you get like that. I connect because my dad didn't love me either. <laughs> I feel you, dude. That's rough, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, um, any, any last final thoughts, as is tradition? Uh, remember, Can kids, don't lose. Yeah, don't Sorry, lose what? the android. That's all I've got. I mean, mm. I'd, I'd, I'd chill this. If anybody wants a quick, f emotional, message-driving read, I would absolutely throw this as a recommendation out there. This is one of, one of my favorites. Despite it being short and not all that in depth, this is one of my favorites out there. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, it's, oh, yeah. it's pretty good. Alright, well, I uh, I guess that's that. So, uh, everyone say your farewells, and uh, we'll, we'll see everybody uh, next week when we finish Katawa Shoujo. Bye on uh, It's gonna be Hanukkah <laughs> week. It's gonna be a good time. Hanukkah week? <laughs> yeah. I thought that was uh, back in December. Are you saying Hanako or Hanukkah? I'm exactly. Saying, I'm saying Hanako. Katawa Shoujo's Hanako. We're podcasting okay. next week, and we're... we're... I, I thought you meant next week was Hanukkah. No. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah, Hanukkah was indeed back in December. But we'll, sell the, we'll do a Hanukkah, <laughs> a Hanukkah Hanukkah podcast this coming December. How about that? There we go. We'll <laughs> Ronnie, celebrate sit down with that. The, the seven oy days vey. Of, yeah, the, oy vey, the seven days of Hanukkah. All right, well, <laughs> till next time, everybody. See ya. Peace. Bye.